Well, thanks for joining us on this Resetting Your Fat Loss Hormones. I often think that folks don't think that something like this even exists. But when I start throwing out some names and using fancy nomenclature like ghrelin, leptin, cholecystokinin, fasting insulins, um, adiponectin, don't be overwhelmed. Just know that these are all hormones that are God-given, that are set in place, that you can either encourage, send the right signals to, so that you, they stay in the proper loop and do what they've been designed to do, or I can make bad decisions from a diet, dietary standpoint. I reset those fat loss hormones. Unfortunately, you don't reset them for the good, you reset them for the bad. Let's start off with number one, ghrelin. Ghrelin actually works in controlling appetite and the stimulation of appetite. We know one thing, that at more balanced ghrelin levels, it regulates human growth hormone. Human growth hormone helps you to maintain lean muscle mass, repair mechanisms, discourages fat deposition. The more activity, the more physical activity and exercise, and if I can lose a little bit of excess weight, what you do is you reset ghrelin levels, you encourage ghrelin production. You sleep less than eight hours, get five or six hours of sleep at night, your ghrelin levels go down, your body mass index increases. Fiber intake, I don't eat enough fiber through foods, uh, my ghrelin levels go down. I increase food sources of fiber, my ghrelin levels go up. Ghrelin will actually kind of destimulate your appetite, if you will, so it works to control appetite. Three key points for ghrelin levels. Get adequate sleep, adequate activity and physical exercise, make good food choices that are full of food sources of fiber. Number two, leptin. This is a big favorite of mine. We test this a lot with folks that we work with. Leptin levels are important because if you are leptin resistant because you've made poor choices, your insulin levels are spiked, you eat a lot of processed types of foods, you eat a lot of sugar, you eat a lot of deep fried foods, what you do is you encourage leptin resistance. As leptin rises, inflammation rises, inflammatory proteins rise, bottom line is you lose the shut off mechanism that tells you that you don't need to eat anymore. You lose the concept that you're full and you have been satiated, you blow right through that signal you lose the setting, you begin to reset negatively your leptin levels. What's the key? Fiber, adding more fiber, cutting back on volume and quantity of food that you eat, using things like green tea extracts. We have an awesome product called Essential Lean that has some concentrates of EGCGs. We also use a product called PGX, which is a type of a viscous fiber that can help you with managing your leptin levels as well. Cholecystokinin. Cholecystokinin is interesting because it's a gut peptide. It's called a gut peptide hormone. Um, it also regulates digestion and satiety. If you have more of an obesity-inducing like diet, you already know what that is. What's going to happen? You reduce receptor activity to cholecystokinin. Cholecystokinin becomes um, dysregulated. You're Consumption of foods typically goes up because you don't have the signaling to tell you to not eat as much. Weight gain ensues, cholecystokinin. Do you know an interesting food that can help you reset your cholecystokinin is beans. The types of fiber that are found in beans, the ratio. So make some bean salads. Make some five bean salad, put some red peppers and green peppers and some onions and cut that up. Put a little bit of balsamic vinegar and a little bit of olive oil and lemon juice. Why? Because with this type of food stuff and more fiber in general, you reset cholecystokinin levels. Adiponectin. I know that I want to get into adiponectin. It's a little maybe too sophisticated for what we'd like to do here. Just know that greater sources of fiber in your diet will help to reset your adiponectin levels. Very powerful one, which I've been an advocate of for 20 years, understanding insulin levels. So insulin, um, what's that do? See, if my insulin levels are elevated, it halts the fat burning components. See, I can't access fat. So what will happen is, instead of glucagon working for me, glucagon levels go down. If my insulin levels are up, it prevents the fat burn and the burn of stored fat. That's a huge, huge problem. Because if you are insulin resistant and you're cranking out high insulin levels, it makes it virtually impossible for you to lose weight, the adipose tissue. You might break down muscle mass, but you won't break down the fat mass. Basic 
tips here. Cut back on your sugar. Cut back on your refined. Cut back on your white. Cut back on your processed, your deep fried. Increase the fibers. That fiber keeps coming up time and time again. High insulin diminishes human growth hormone production. That's a big problem because now you even, see it's like a domino effect. When one of these hormones goes south, you have the potential to affect at least one other component, and possibly two. This one affects multiple layers. Add a prep like our core IR has berberine in it or our Burb Advanced, Berberine Advanced. Use Ultra Glucose Control as a meal replacement. We have all this information on our website. Add a product known as Omega Advanced that uses palmitoleic acid that helps to sensitize your insulin receptors. This is invaluable information, I tell you. Um, we often think, well, I'm just gonna go on this crash diet. I'm gonna do this type of diet. No, if you understand resetting these hormones and how you can work at this literally on a daily basis, this is your answer right here. Irisin levels, this is awesome. Irisin, I know this is getting long-winded, but follow me for one, two more minutes. Irisin levels are stimulated or rise in the presence of exercise. So if you don't exercise, your irisin levels go down. That's a huge, huge problem. So two things happen. I increase exercise, irisin levels rise. Here's what you do. You convert white fat to brown fat, which is more metabolically active. Brown fat is more ready to be burned as energy. It's more metabolically active. It's less inert than white fat. Exercise stimulates the conversion of white to brown fat. That's big stuff right there. That's very important for you to understand that. Does that mean I have to work out three hours a day? No. If I could get you engaged for about 30 minutes, four times a week, something pretty demanding, or 15 to 20 minutes a day, um, I, I think that's a big step in the right direction for you. Exercise stimulates irisin, I-R-I-S-I-N. It helps you to maintain your body weight. The more irisin you make, you improve your energy expenditure. So what are the final keys? Get adequate sleep. You've got to sleep seven to eight hours at night. Manage your stress. I haven't talked about it, but you've got to manage your stress. Stress hormones cause a stimulation of cortisol imbalances the DHEA cortisol ratio and domino effects and kicks off these other uh, fat loss hormones for you. Hydration. Many of us just don't drink enough water. We don't eat enough fiber. You can use our prep PGX to help you with that. Our um, essential lean that has the green tea extracts and the coffee bean extracts. Ultra glucose control will help to stabilize those blood sugars documented to bring your insulin levels down. Exercise. There's no excuse. You've, you've got to begin to engage in physical activity. Lastly, know that your food choices drive, your food choices drive this whole fat loss hormone. You have fat loss hormones. You do. You're meant to be a leaner fighting machine, basically. But what we do by the bad choices we make, not understanding this, we pervert the whole process. It starts knocking down all these fat loss hormones, you gain weight, and then you want to crash diet and lean it out. God bless you. Thanks for being with us. See you on the next video cast.